being is enough. One daunting feature of the trek to higher consciousness is that many times it feels like tumbling uncontrollably down a rabbit hole. And like Alice, all that can be done is to accept and allow for all the strangeness as life becomes a seemingly infinite hall of mirrors reflecting over and over deepest fears and the strongest arguments against our empowerment. In her talk in the Science of Non-Duality series, Miranda McPherson speaks poignantly about the stripping away of all convention in a spiritual practice where the practice becomes having no practice. But to get there, there is a reckoning between who and what we believe we are and what is actually there. Very disturbing because one realizes that all definitions of self have been mere habitual and unconsciousness constructs. Of course, we are trained to do this via the socialization process, and so when the reckoning arrives, there is a path to self-forgiveness, although at the time it's difficult to accept. This, in fact, is the core value of forgiveness, not so much about some wrongdoing, but much more about an act of unconsciousness, represented by the adoption of an identity, a requirement of socialization. In the Hawaiian shamanistic practice of Ho'oponopono, the practitioner uses a four-step process to break out of unconscious definitions that hold in place physical, emotional, and spiritual dis-ease. There is dis-ease because the adoption of a socialized identity has required we shut off certain expressions for ourselves which equate to shutting off healthy gene expressions. The four-step process of Ho'oponopono is one, I am sorry. Two, please forgive me. Three, thank you. And four, I love you. This is done as a radical act of forgiveness and unconditional love that peels away the lie of the identification with who a person believes they are thus leading to a freeing up of energy flows, creating healing. McPherson also reveals that this process of rude awakening left her questioning whether she had anything at all to offer, and the realization and awareness that the truck to perceived higher consciousness has nothing to do with what you do about it and everything to do with being. Being is enough. This radical notion flies directly in the face of identity socialization as it frees us from all the definitions and expectations of self, opening the door to the experience of infinite possibilities and personal power. In the core practices of access consciousness, there is a process of asking, what else is possible when life seems stuck? The process deconstructs fixed beliefs and limitations that we use to define ourselves. Because we believe we are a certain way, then only a narrow band of experience is available to us. We tamp down expectations and our personal power, all for the sake of protecting the belief construct of our identity. By asking what else is possible, we call out the basic native quantum state of infinite possibility, where every state is possible, and the basic nature of the state is infinite. This infiniteness of possibility is inherent because we have infinite potential as creative points of being. We contain the potential to be a superhero or a rock. It's basically just a matter of simple choice. The archetype of the shapeshifter embodies this potential for infinite diversity of expression. As we continue tumbling down the seemingly infinite rabbit hole, we transcend becoming, allowing that identifications with cherished identities to fall away. It becomes more about remembering and realizing our pure, unadulterated being, rather than becoming something, as that is the definition, limiting our experience. Pure being is love, and as love, we create infinite possibilities, creation without end. You have been listening to This Quantum Life by Boyd Martin. 
Brought to you by the Quantum Health Newsletter from Pure Energy RX. www.pureenergyrx.com.